2021. We are starting our meeting this evening at 7.12 p.m. Uh, welcome everybody, hope everybody is doing well. And we are being broadcast live as always on PAT. Uh, the minutes for the meeting are being taken by our recording secretary, Leanna Harris. And as we always do when we come to public participation, if there is someone that would like to speak, we are being uh, broadcast on the uh, Facebook platform. And anybody that would like to speak, please raise your hand uh, to be identified and we'll bring you forward to the meeting at, pu at public participation. I'd like to start our meeting with a moment of silence. And I'd like to turn it over to Mrs. Dunn. We'd like to dedicate uh, this moment of silence to a couple of our educators who have passed away. Mrs. Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. When we do our moment of silence, we'd like to ask that you keep in, in your prayers the families of two longtime high school teachers. Um, the first is Anne-Marie Berthium Dubois. Mrs. Dubois was an amazing teacher. She taught all honors classes, and she was at the high school from 1970 to 1986, and then at that time she moved on to the American Federation of Teachers and worked for them for many, many years. She took care of her students and she took care of teachers and was a very professional person who took her, took her job very seriously no matter what she was doing. She will be sorely missed by her family. The other teacher who passed away, again, was a teacher at the high school who taught math, and her name was Frances Wetterlow. And Mrs. Wetterlow lived in Beverly and passed away um, after becoming, uh, she worked for many years at Peabody High School and then was a stay-at-home mother to her four children and then came back, as many teachers do, as a substitute teacher. And she was a dedicated teacher and a doting mother and grandmother. So if you could keep them in your, in your prayers, we'd appreciate it. Thank you, Mrs. Dunn. So please join me in standing for a moment of silence, and then we're going to follow that with the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. If there's no objection, I'd like to go out of order a little bit today. We have uh, some guests we have uh, that we'd like to uh, invite to speak. Uh, first, um, two special guests that we have here, two of our high school students uh, that we brought forward today for some recognition. Uh, I received a call uh, from a friend, uh, a lady who works as a warden for, uh, at Peabody Veterans Memorial High School on Election Day. November 2nd, this past November 2nd, 2021, uh, Marilyn Michaelak. And Marilyn had reached out to me in my office uh, because she was extremely impressed uh, by two young men at Peabody High School uh, in an incident that had happened. And uh, she wanted to bring it to my attention in hopes of bringing it to uh, the school board and uh, school leadership's attention. Uh, but Marilyn had talked to me about um, a senior citizen who had fallen and had gotten hurt and two of our own PBD Veterans Memorial High School students uh, really stepped up and uh, helped her tremendously. Uh, one of those students, Josh Trelligan, uh, ran and immediately got attention uh, for the woman who had, who, who had, fell, who had fallen and gotten hurt. Uh, he was able to get medical attention and police attention to help her. And uh, Jake Colesrud uh, stayed with her, helped her up, tried to uh, assist her uh, during that time when medical attention was on its way. And it was just an example of, of two of our students stepping up and we wanted to bring them in today, uh, Dr. Vidala, uh, Principal Magno, and, and really the whole school community wanted to bring uh, these boys forward and, uh, and recognize their efforts. And before we bring them up, I did want to ask Marilyn uh, Michael Act to come forward and um, Marilyn, so nice to have you with us. And maybe if you could just uh, speak to what you saw and, and why you thought you should bring it forward to me. 
I've worked the elections for approximately 40 years, and this is the first time that anything like this has happened in all the years I've done it. I've gone up through the ranks and become warden about 10 years ago, and I enjoy it, I love it, I love being with the people, and this incident that happened on election day, I was just so proud of these boys because they knew what to do and they need the recognition in today's day and age to be recognized for the good. We hear so much bad, let's hear the good. So that's why I felt in my heart I wanted them to be recognized. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for bringing this to our attention. And um, 40 years as a warden, that sounds pretty pretty tough I will say that word uh... <laughs> when I first started I worked at night just counting the hand ballots and I have worked my way up to become warden I love it I love doing it no but thank you so much because that's often something I worry about in fear and we've talked about that collectively as a group that too often you hear about the negative and you don't hear about the positive and so many wonderful things are happening in our schools and and young men and women are doing some amazing things and this is just an example so Josh Jake come on up here All right, so I have a certificate, a citation of community recognition that I wanted to present to each of you on behalf of our community, and uh, it's presented to Josh and to Jake. In recognition of your quick and decisive action in assisting a Peabody citizen during a medical emergency and the care and kindness you provided to her. On behalf of the city of Peabody, please accept our sincere appreciation and admiration for your unwavering courage in responding to an emergency and your extraordinary act of heroism. And this is presented to you on behalf of the Peabody School Committee, Peabody School Leadership, and the City of Peabody in my office. So uh, congratulations and thank you both. Thank you. you guys ready for some speeches? You guys gonna give some speeches? <laughs> Seniors are winning six to nothing, Mr. Mayor. That was wonderful, some nice news about our wonderful students in Peabody. We have some really good kids there and, and we appreciate the work that you did and uh, it just goes to reflect on how many good students we have here. So thank you. Um, if you'll excuse the mayor, he had another event to, uh, to go to so I'm gonna be taking over as chair and at this moment I'm gonna continue to go out of order if there's no objections and refer, uh, defer to Mr. Amico. Sure, thank you through the chair. Thank you, Ms. Carpenter. Um, the next item on the agenda is uh, Corey Jackson from Citizens in Haven from Hunger. Um, I asked Corey to um, come and just speak to us and to the public uh, to give us an update on, especially this week being Thanksgiving week. Uh, I'm sure the need is great um, throughout the year, but also uh, more so during the uh, holiday season. So, uh, Mr. Jackson, if you could just give us an update and just tell us what you, you, you and your great staff do over at Citizens in Haven. and. Uh, Hopefully we can get some more people to A, donate, B, volunteer, and if not, just spread the word because they're just doing an incredible job and they, um, you know, without, without them, a lot of people would be hurting in the city of Peabody. So thank you, Mr. Jackson. This guy? Here we go. All right. Uh, thank you, Joe, and uh, thank you everyone for having me. Um, I'm Corey Jackson. Uh, star of Mrs. McCarthy's second grade production of the Wackadoo Zoo at the Welch School in 1983, just PVMHS class of 95, 
and I was told today to come to the Higgins Library. Well, that used to be over there, so I was very confused, but I found it, so I passed the test. But I say all that because I have such fond memories of being a student in the Peabody school system, and it really did uh, wonders for me uh, and my family. And um, I just think of all the families that are struggling so much and the fact that we're here uh, to assist them. And I'm going to go through some of the things that we did over the last 18 months and some of what we're up against right now. Uh, in COVID-19, since the beginning of this thing, we've been engaged with the school department and, uh, of course, collaborated a lot with No Child Goes Hungry and Peabody as well. Jared and I were on buses, trucks, our own cars, and any other way we could get food to the schools. We supplied thousands of bags of groceries that went home with school families during the lockdown. We distributed on a regular basis out of Welch, Higgins, and the high school. Over the summers of 2020 and 2021, we produced well over 12,500 school lunches, and we distributed those out of the Haven from Hunger Kitchen at the Welch School, McCarthy School, South Library, Main Library, West Library, and all of the mobile parks along Route 1 North and South. Over the last 18 months, we've seen new registrations grow at Haven from Hunger at an alarming 269% year over year. Like you are seeing increases in enrollment, we are seeing increases in new families coming to our door for the first time. And the pressure is not letting up. For those most vulnerable, they are seeing cost of living rise expen uh, exponentially, making our services at Citizens Inn and Haven from Hunger even more critical. All of this to say we are so grateful to the community for supporting our mission if we did not exist, this crisis would be a lot worse. In the past 12 months, we have provided emergency shelter to over 50 families, fed over 6,000 Peabody and Salem residents. It's now one in 20 Peabody residents that we're serving through Haven from Hunger. And on top of all of that, we did everything I mentioned earlier for the school department families. To give you a sense of scale, the food out the door valued over $4.1 million in the last 12 months. This holiday season, we need the community's support. Volunteer if you can. Uh, email volunteer at citizensin.org. We need people every day. Students who need hours can come after school on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, or Friday and get those hours in. We also need financial support. We have to be able to ramp up staffing, keep our trucks on the road, our facility and storage robust, and we cannot do that without financial gifts. No gift is too small. Contributions can be made at citizensin.org. On December 8th and 11th, we host a toy store for PBD families registered at Haven from Hunger to get toys for all of their kids. This Thanksgiving, we've already given out 1,100 turkeys and all the fixings at 71 Wallace Street. On Thursday, we will hand out and deliver nearly 300 servings of Thanksgiving meals. And this past Monday, we delivered 98 turkeys to almost every single PBD school. While I was out and about, I talked to several school principals, and all of them said the same thing. We know there is more need, but there is so much pride and not enough families are asking for help. I look forward to continuing to work with the school departments and families in Peabody to break down the stigma and engage families who need our support. And thank you again for all you've done for Citizens Inn and will continue to do to make sure we remain a strong and viable source of relief for so many Peabody families. I can take any questions if you, if you have any or, if you like. but thank you very much. Mr. Jackson, thank you so much for coming here and, and telling us all of those facts and figures. It's kind of astonishing and, and sad. And, you know, we really appreciate everything that you and your team have done. Two things I want to uh, repeat, donations, citizensin.org. Yes. Volunteer, uh, you can email volunteer at citizensin.org. Yep. Okay, just wanted to get those out yep. again for you. Um, I, I have a question. Are you still doing the backpack program? So uh, No Child Goes Hungry does the backpacks that go home on Fridays. It's a different nonprofit. Okay. However, Citizens in Haven from Hunger is the source of all the food in those backpacks. So we, we take our trucks into Boston, get a lot of that food, and, uh, and provide Jared and his team with the food they need to be able to, to pack those backpacks. And then their volunteers uh, get that out to all the families. Oh, I think that's right. you did. You did do backpacks, right? We're, we're, school year with the school supplies. Yes, school supplies. Yes, for yes. yeah, okay. yeah, for, yeah, for everybody at uh, all the families at Haven from Hunger, 
uh, all the families that live in our in our shelter program. Sorry, I, I was no, confused no. between the two different. Either way, both programs. of them are great. Yeah, they're yep. both great, and it's they're great collaboration. Great. Yep. Um, and can you repeat again the hours um, you were looking for students? What what were the hours? You yeah, said? so students can volunteer on any any day. We're open Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, or Friday, right after school, and we're open till about six six thirty. So they can get a good two or three hours in. Can if, you tell um, us the address for parents? Yes, seventy one Wallace Street. In puberty okay and um, if we could um, dr. Vidala if we could send that message out to all the principals we have a lot of students that are looking for community service hours and students that just want to help not for um, mm -hmm. uh, community service hours mm -hmm. but if we could get that out uh, to each school and then maybe they can distribute to all the parents because I, I I frequently see that's a question where can we help how can we help where do we go what are the hours those type of things so I want to thank you for coming. I know that thank there you. are some, some other committee members here that would like to speak to you, so don't go away. Okay. Um, Mr. Amico. Great. Thank you. Through the chair, Dr. Mr. Jackson, again, thank you for all you do, Corey. Um, I did notice on social media that the town of Hamilton just made a huge donation to citizens in, ha in Haven from Hunger. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And yeah. with that, if the town of Hamilton can do that, I'm going to challenge the city of Peabody to do something <laughs> that you may need over the next 30 days and we'll put this together so we um, we see support from all over uh, our shelter program actually serves a 20 mile radius uh, from this location in Peabody um, so we get support from a lot of the surrounding communities as well Hamilton Wenham uh, the Tritown area uh, Danvers we, we see a lot of support and a lot of uh, our board members are actually from those communities as well Peabody is by far our largest uh, supporter. Um, the, we raised $1.2 million last year. I don't know how much of that money is from 01960, but a, but a large percentage. Um, and one of the things that, um, that we're trying to do is, is make sure that with Peabody giving so much that we are making the other communities do their share. And a lot of them are stepping up like what you saw with Hamilton Wenham, uh, incredible support from there. Um, what we, you know, what we need most is financial contributions. Right now, we're in the middle of a, a comprehensive campaign. We have a generous donor that through the end of the year is matching every donation dollar for dollar up to $50,000. Um, that's Dan Johnson and Faye Koholnin from, from Lowell Street and Peabody and uh, incredible supporters. And, um, and so that, that just gives people another reason to donate right now through the end of the year, for sure. But we can come up with a challenge for Peabody with the chair let's let's do it and let's let's all I mean this is helping our kids I mean for the most part it's it's a lot of its women and children right absolutely so. um, uh, a shelter program it's mostly single mothers with uh, toddlers and infants um, some of them school age and going into the PBD school system um, at Haven from hunger uh, about 6,000 individuals equally split between PBD and Salem so think about 3,000 um, individuals from Peabody, a lot of those children. All right. Thank you. I, I do want to add that I happen to know on a personal note that Monday Higgins Haven from Hunger Food Drive starts and I believe one of the prizes is a Taco Tuesday lunch and an ice cream <laughs> party. So that starts nice. Monday. Um, so I know that the kids will be bringing in food That's very great. soon for that. And so we're ready for our challenge. Anyone else? No. Mrs. Dunn. Thank you, Mrs. Chairman. Um, thanks, Mr. Jackson. Absolutely. You really do incredible work. Thank and you. And it is amazing. Um, as far as the do donations, in order to have it matched, does anyone have to, like on your website, do you have to direct where the money is going to go so it gets matched, or it's just no. any donation can Yeah, get it's matched? all financial contributions between now and the end of the year. Wonderful. Yep. Okay, yep. thank you. Mr. Olympio. Thank you, Mr. Jackson, for all you do. It's Thank just, you. Um, I think this, you know, we're celebrating this week, but there are a lot of families that, if it weren't for organizations like yourself and people that really put their time and effort and love and energy into what you do, um, there's a segment of the population out there that, you know, wouldn't have the opportunity to have any type of uh, Thanksgiving dinner or anything like that. So. Especially this holiday season, I would encourage everybody to, um, you know, to do what they can. And 
I think that's wonderful that we try to get our students involved. Uh, uh, we see all kinds of examples of great things that our students do. So that's a great opportunity for the students to help out the community. So thank you. Definitely. and We really appreciate everything that you do. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Arnotis? Leapfrog on Mr. Olympio's comments. Thank you so much for what you guys do for our community here. Um, Citizens has actually came up this week. Um, I was at a conversation with someone from another part of the state and they were, it was someone within the Chelsea area who was preparing for a food drive. I think they were doing today or yesterday and they were talking about how they have you know, some resources. I said, well, we have Citizens Inn up on the North Shore and I think, and they, they recognize the name. So I think you're certainly well known enough out there that uh, you know, you've had that effect and that reach. So thank you guys for all you do at this difficult time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. We appreciate you coming and we are here to help. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Okay, we're gonna go back to the um, regular agenda. And the next item is approval of minutes. I'd like to make a motion to approve warrant number 4913. One second, Mr. Oh. We're gonna do uh, minutes first. Oh, minutes. Yes. Okay, there you I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of November 9th, 2021. Do we have a second? Second. Great, you've heard the motion to approve minutes from Mrs. Dunn, second Mr. Olympio. Roll call vote. Mr. Olympio? Yes. Mr. Amico? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mrs. Carpenter? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Oh, yes. Mr. Arnotis? Yes. Thank you, the uh, next item is the approval of bills, Mr. Olympio. Forgot about the minutes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, there wasn't anything. About uh, it. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to approve warrant number 4913 dated November 23rd, 2021 in the amount of $323,418.13 subject to audit. Second. You've heard the motion to approve warrant number 4913. Roll call vote. Mr. Olympio? Yes. Mr. Amico? Yes. Mrs. Carpenter? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Arnotis? Yes. I'd like to make a motion to approve warrant number 4914, dated November 23rd, 2021, in the amount of $649,518.79, subject to audit. Second. You've heard the motion to approve warrant number four. 914 by Mr. Olympio, seconded by Mr. Amico. Roll call vote. Mr. Olympio? Yes. Mr. Amico? Yes. Mrs. Carpenter? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Arnotis? Yes. I'd like to make a motion to approve warrant number 4915, dated November 23, 2021, in the amount of $2,907,136.34, subject to audit. Second. You've heard the motion to approve warrant number 4915 from Mr. Olympio, seconded by Mr. Amico. Roll call vote. Mr. Olympio? Yes. Mr. Amico? Yes. Mrs. Carpenter? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Arnotis? Yes. Thank you. Moving on, we will go to continued business. Uh, Mrs. Dunn? Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Um, the Welch School project is currently uh, preparing for our 20th school building committee meeting. And it will be held on Thursday, December 16th at 9.30 a.m. It will be available on Zoom and members of the public are invited to watch that. We do have public comment if people want to, they can watch it and speak. And at that time, we'll be updating the members on the current status of the, um, oh my goodness, the funding, the design, the confirmation of a lot of the uh, work being prepared now. So uh, it's going to be a very interesting meeting. And if anybody has any questions, I'm always happy to answer. Thank you, Mrs. Dunn. This is no questions. We're going to move on to the superintendent's report. Dr. Vidala. Thank you, Mrs. Carpenter. Uh, so we have a couple items on the superintendent's report, and I'm pleased to announce uh, for the, the first time we're bringing our 
PBD Veterans Memorial High School Student Advisory Council. So we have our, our advisor, Mrs. Amanda Prouty, and one of our students, Ryan McGrath, who can come up. And we have a nice presentation uh, for the Student Advisory Council. And we will be hearing from them once a month as we, as we did in the past. So we're very excited uh, to welcome Mrs. Prouty and, and Ryan. Hi, my name is Ryan McGrath. I am one of the lead representatives of the Student Advisory Council. I'm a bit nervous. Um, some of the other members couldn't make it tonight, so um, I will, I will be presenting this to you. So this is, um, these are some of our lead representatives. Um, most of them have powder puff tonight, so they cannot attend. And the alternates, unfortunately, cannot attend as well. So we are going to talk about our highlights and going forward in our um, high school. Just generally top topics and um, ups and downs that we're going to go through in the high school. So right now, Spirit Week and Powder Puff are going on like as we, as we, <laughs> I'm sorry, as, as we're going on right now. Um, Powder Puff is actually happening tonight. I think it already happened. Pep Rally is tomorrow. Um, we are having student council meetings. We already have our officers in check. We have our advisors in check. Um, the representatives are all set. And we just want to work together as a student council. Um, together, we want to open communication, just increasing our student voice through all grades. We recently had a production of Spam a Lot. I was the lead, King Arthur. Uh, it's just a little. <laughs> yeah. He was great. We have our prom scheduled. Do we have a junior prom scheduled? This um, junior prom, I don't have the date, but I believe it is scheduled, mm -hmm. yes. And w a lot of clubs are um, taking place as we speak and activities. And to add about our student council, we have a really active and large student council this year mm -hmm. where we have a lot of various representatives, in plus the various grade officers and our student advisory council, which encompasses currently seniors, juniors, and freshmen. So we have representation from all the grades. Our, our problem or our issue we would like to tackle this year would be the student parking lot and general traffic. Lately, um, we, have been, we have been noticing that there's a lot of issues regarding um, driving from the students and just general traffic with par parent um, parking lots and student parking lots. So some solutions that we found were holding cars, um, buses using other entrances, speak with transportation department about what is feasible, um, police presence like traffic officers who are um, letting people in and stopping people, limit student athletes from moving their cars if, if it's not necessary. If their car is in the student parking lot, it doesn't really need, it, need to be uh, moved to the teacher parking lot. Um, we would also like to ask permission to use the ice rink because it would really help us with um, the general traffic in our school. This is a topic the students are really passionate about, um, and I have to say at least 50 different students across the grades have come forward with possible solutions and ideas, so they're very eager to get it corrected um, for safety and also flow. If you guys have any questions, we can answer them now. Thank you for that. We uh, appreciate finally hearing from you guys. It's been a while and um, it's nice to have people here and to let us know what's going on. So Mrs. Dunn, I'm going to go to you first. Do you have an update on the Powder Puff game? Yes, I do. <laughs> it was King Arthur, I was trying to show you the screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's currently six to nothing. Seniors are ahead. Uh, it's, hmm. 22 minutes, and there's something wrong with the time, but it's first and 10. And I think they're in the second quarter. There we go, okay, they fixed it, second quarter. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Dunn, that was important. We had to get that yes. update. <laughs> um, Up to the minute. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> I'm so excited to see that list of activities, clubs, prom, all these things that we 
we kind of missed out on before. So it's great that these things are happening. Spam a lot was a huge success. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, student parking, I feel like we've been here before a few times, so I know that um, if we partner up with you, uh, we can take this kind of like into a subcommittee. I know that a lot of the members here have gone through this before, and we can definitely help you with that. Um, so I'm going to see if any other committee members um, have anything to add. Mr. Miko? Through the chair. Ryan, thank you. Thank you for being here. I'd have to say, I think that's the first time in my six years that someone has been referred to as King Arthur <laughs> at our, one of our meetings. Um, we had a superintendent that was named the King, Dr. Levine, but King Arthur, I think he, that supersedes that. But Ryan, thank you for being here. I know your parents well. Uh, they're super proud of you. Uh, you've turned into a great young man. So uh, thank you for all you do at the high school. I know you're involved in uh, ROTC as yeah, well. Yeah, I'm in the and, top five in ROTC. Yeah, so you're, you're just, you're just killing it there so so thank you very much for all you do and for bringing this to us and uh, as Miss Carpenter said we'll uh, I think we can push that through our building and grounds uh, committee and see if we can remedy some of those um, so those, is those issues but thank you for being thank here you. appreciate it thank you mr. Amico anyone else mrs. Dunn if there's any more football updates throw that into when you talk <laughs> nothing yet okay <laughs> I'm, I'm watching with one when I, oh, I don't know. Everybody's excited, but they're in the middle of the field, so I don't know what's <laughs> happening. Um, I do want to thank you for, for coming tonight. Your role is so important, and I hope the Student Advisory Council understands that you're mandated by law, and you have a great responsibility. So um, it's nice to have you in place and coming back. And as Mrs. Carpenter said, it's so nice to see all those events taking place as well. So it makes us really happy. Just a couple of things, just so that you know, of the five core members of the Advisory Council, they need to vote and select a member of those five as their chairperson. So let us know who you determine to be your chair. And also, when you're working on any traffic issues at each of the schools, there should be a safety committee. And that committee has to work with the traffic department at the police department. They're a great resource, and they can really give you a lot of good advice on dealing with the traffic issues, the layout, um, you know, deployment of personnel, everything. And I think that they would be very happy to work with you because it's, it's a concern always always a concern and um, we want to make sure all of you kids are safe so uh, you've got your work cut out for you but I'm really happy to hear you come forward not just with the activities but with an issue that you want to work on for your fellow students so you're already starting off very very well good luck to you thank you thank you mrs. Dunn well said Any other, anybody else did you have something? Excellent. Th yeah. Thank you so much for being here. We're very excited about the work that you're going to do and the fact that you'll be coming monthly and we'll con continue to see the progress and, and have the great updates. Um, so, again, congratulations on Spam a lot. Excellent job there. And, um, you know, I don't want to spoil the future, but we received notice today about JROTC since you mentioned it. Uh, we have a report from JROTC. They just had their um, review from, from the military and they exceeded standards. Um, so I will be sharing that with the committee, and um, we'd you know, potentially like to invite them to a future meeting. But uh, we just received that today, so congratulations on that as well. There's a lot of great things happening at, at, at PBD High School, and we're very excited to hear all the wonderful things that you're doing. So thank you so much. We're having our next, um, sorry, we're having our next student advisory council meeting next week, so we'll get back to you about the, um, the member and um, anything that comes up with the safety committee, for sure. It was also traditional that when you met the students got pizza. Yes. <laughs> Just um, putting it out there. Principal Tell Mr. Magno. Principal Magno has promised pizza and he's promised me coffee. So, <laughs> yes. That's been, that's been discussed. Okay. We're on your side, yes. King Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> if I may, one other thing, Dr. Vidal, since you brought up the JROTC, I don't know if you were there at the veterans, at the veterans ceremony, Ryan, were you there? I wasn't here this year. Okay. But I was here, um, I think the 2019 one. Right. It seemed like a lot of the younger, the, the freshmen and sophomore were at this year. You would have all been so proud of the JROTC students. They were a huge part of this year's Veterans Day celebration and ceremony at City Hall. 
and they performed an amazing flag ceremony. It's a really, really special ceremony that they did. And afterwards, I had so many people come up to me to compliment the students and to compliment the program. It was very, very well received and truly appreciated by all of the veterans that were at that ceremony, as well as members of the public. So I want you to know that. Thank you for adding that, Mrs. Dunn. More great, awesome kids that we have in Peabody in our schools. Thank you for coming. We look forward to seeing you again next month with more great news and resolutions to some of your issues. And um, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. OK, okay. continuing on. Continuing on uh, with the superintendent's report. Uh, just like to acknowledge again Joshua and Jake. Uh, we had them on the agenda for uh, for their recognition, they did such a great job. Uh, the third item on the superintendent's report is a donation. And uh, this is an another example of the great things that our students do. Um, Simon Youth Foundation gave a $1,200 donation to the community high school. And they decided to use that money to purchase hats, gloves, scarves, and winter clothes for our students when they volunteer at Citizens Inn. So um, the students at the community high school do a weekly vocational support program at Citizens Inn. So we have some photos here of the work that they're doing. And as it gets colder, um, they, they were able to use this to, to buy some winter hats and some waterproof jackets uh, so that the kids have them. They'll be kept at the high school, and the kids will be able to use them uh, when they're volunteering. Um, so. I would entertain a motion to accept the donation with gratitude and we'd send a letter to the Simon Youth Foundation just thanking them. Motion to follow the recommendation of the superintendent. You've heard the motion by Mrs. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Notice. All in favor? Yep, that's a vote. Thank you. The last item on the superintendent's report is an update on our health and wellness. So uh, we did want to publicly thank Corey Jackson and Citizens Inn. He was able to present earlier this evening. Uh, he did he and Citizens Inn did donate uh, nearly 100 turkeys to our families in need. They were delivered on Monday. Um, we're also currently working in collaboration with Corey um, and Citizens Inn around planning for our summer foods program and all the locations that he mentioned. Um, we also wanted to thank uh, No Child Goes Hungry in Peabody for their continued work to address food insecurity. Um, and then finally, in your packet under the written communications, there's a letter from our food services director. It's a similar letter as other um, food services directors are putting out there. We're going to post it on our website, but I wanted to share it with the committee first. There have been some last minute menu changes due to the food sh shortages and some supply chain issues. So for example, uh, if they're unable to get a delivery, uh, they may need to make a last minute change to what the menu is, uh, but we have provided a free lunch and breakfast for any student um, all year long. So we haven't interrupted that. Um, I, I will share that uh, there was a day when it was supposed to be waffles and my children were very excited and they were very upset when they got, um, I think the, the meal that day was beef stew. So, so uh, that was an unhappy day in, in the Vidala household. <laughs> However, all the children got, got their lunches that day. Uh, they were a little disappointed that they didn't get the waffles, but um, it, it, was, it was provided the following week. So. Um, well, that's a big change, waffles to beef wa wa stew. <laughs> waffles to beef stew, yes. So the, the Vidal <laughs> girls were not, uh, not none too pleased when, they, when, when Daddy came home that night. Uh, yes, exactly. So you, some people were very happy with it, you know. Uh, so uh, moving on, uh, the, the last piece here is a little bit more on health and safety. Um, this is a graphic that was shared with us um, from from DESE and DPH. This is last year's trajectory um, of, of new cases in, in um, new positive cases throughout the entire Commonwealth. And so this area down here in the middle is the start of the school year, and then you see a little bump, and then it rises way up pre Thanksgiving, post Thanksgiving, post Christmas, and then you see it come down. So DESE and DPH are expecting a surge in cases around the holidays. What they're not sure about is because of the vaccine and, and the amount of people that, that have been able to um, you know, get, get vaccinated or the other steps that people have taken, if this curve is going to be a little flatter, but they do uh, anticipate a spike in cases. So I wanted to show this graphic is our current numbers. These are just the numbers I've sent you each week for the weekly COVID cases in our schools. So 
we saw at the very beginning of the school year, we saw in the 29 to 30 range, and then we had those four weeks in a row where the numbers were sort of getting uh, really under control and, and, and really getting very infrequent, and now we're starting to see a little bit of a spike. We saw 26 one week, and then the last two weeks we've seen 45 and 42 respectively. Uh, again, this is less than 1% of all people in, in the school district, uh, but we are monitoring it very closely to make sure that, that we have um, all of the proper supports in place. You will notice that uh, there is a written communication of support from DESE about if there is a spike in cases, what we can do, what resources we have. And I just wanted to, to share what we're currently doing to address a potential surge. So the mask mandate has been extended in our schools until January 15th. We continue to offer the monthly COVID testing at the Higgins for anyone in the public. It's the drive-through testing on the Wednesdays, and we'll continue to communicate that. Uh, we will continue our diagnostic and test and stay programs, which have been very helpful keeping students in school. And uh, I am pleased to announce that in partnership with Salem Hospital and our health department, we will be offering uh, vaccine clinics for any families that want them for our 5 to 11 year olds in the schools. And they'll have the first shot uh, beginning the week of November 30th. We'll have one clinic in each school. Uh, and we're, we're pushing out that information now. So the first shot will be uh, right after Thanksgiving. And then the second shot will be right after Christmas. So any family that would like to, to do that, similar to the flu clinics that we've run in the past, we will be offering COVID-19 vaccine clinics for the eligible 5 through 11 year olds. And uh, I'll pause there if there's any questions about any yeah, of the health Amico, and safety updates? Sure. Thank you, Dr. Fidel. I just had a quick question about the test and stay. Can we, and technically right now we don't offer it to cases outside of our buildings in terms of contact tracing. Is there any way we can offer something to students for testing within school versus outside so that we can get those students into our buildings and into our classrooms sooner? Is there something that we could look at? So there has been a question about if it was an at-home contact or an outside of school contact, are they eligible to participate in test and stay? And unfortunately, the answer is no, not at this time. We have talked to DESE. It's a free program that they're funding. Um, and so it, it is only eligible for in-school close contacts. Um, we are you know, trying to figure out as many ways as we can to keep kids in school. Um, we know that there are exemptions for um, quarantine, so we're hopeful that uh, many of our, our families will be able to take advantage of that. But right now, test and stay is only for in-school in close contact. So I know staff and families have both asked about it. Um, and we do, since it is a free program funded by the state, we do have to follow their guidelines. Any other questions on regarding superintendent's report? All right, and then the last thing I just, since it's, since it's Thanksgiving week, I just wanted to just express my gratitude to the incredible work that our families and students have done this year, returning to full in person. Uh, I know it's been very difficult on families, and they've done a great job and been so supportive. And I just wanted to take a moment to thank our staff um, for the wonderful job that our teachers have done um, and, and that our administrators have done, and just, you know, really you know figure this this is the week to express gratitude and uh it's usually getting to thanksgiving is a big milestone in any school year but this year in particular has been very difficult on staff and students and families and i just wanted to express the gratitude on behalf of of the school department for all the great work that they've done and i hope everybody has a wonderful thanksgiving holiday and get some time this weekend uh to enjoy you know with a with a long weekend so thank you all and my sincere gratitude to the committee as well Thank you, Dr. Vidala. Appreciate that. Um, anybody else have anything? No? Okay, moving on. We are going to go to public participation. Is there anyone here in the audience that wishes to speak? Being none, anyone online, Dr. Vidala? Seeing none. Seeing none. Okay. We will move on to written communications. Uh, a couple of them have already been mentioned. We have the DESA DPH frequently asked questions. Uh, we have the memo from Food Services, and we have the MASC Mass Conference and Delegate Assembly report in there. Any comments or questions regarding these written communications? Mrs. Dunn. Thank you, Mrs. Chairman. I'd like to make a motion to receive the written communications. So moved. Second. Okay. You've heard the motion from Mrs. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Amico. Roll call vote. Mr. Olympia? Yes. Mr. Amico? Yes. 
Mrs. Carpenter? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Arnotis? Yes. And I'd also like to ask if I could give a little brief report on the, um, the conference. Thank you. Um, as you know, the, is, there is a report in our packet about the delegate assembly, and that's concerning the elections that took place at the conference, as well as the resolutions. And I just wanted to point out a couple of things about the resolutions. There were nine resolutions, and three of them were passed as a group because there was no opposition, uh, no strong opposition. What they do at the delegate assembly is they go through them all, and if any, any delegate wants a resolution held for discussion, then it is held off to the side. So the three that were basically approved by everyone with the exception of two um, was full funding for the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, alternatives to MCAS and school committees in receivership. Those, those passed right away. On resolution one, which was advocating for proposals that would establish dedicated funding for school-based clinics and services, I just wanted to let you know I got up and spoke on that issue because Peabody has had such a great experience with our school clinic. And one of the difficulties with our clinic and other clinics is that the directors have to go out to try to find funding. And it takes time away from their medical skills and their ability to deal with the students. And this one hopefully will allow a dedicated stream to not only cover the cost of those in-school clinics, but also to make it possible for other communities to have what we have. So it was a very interesting discussion to hear from people across the state about it. Um, the next one was about the homework gap and wireless access, which we've talked about here before. Resolution 4, mandatory recess in public schools. I absolutely spoke on this as a baby delegate waited 18 years for this one. Um, there is legislation currently pending to make recess mandatory, a 20 minute minimum mandatory, and that it will not count against time on learning. And as everyone can probably remember, that was a very, very big issue here in Peabody. And tried everything. The DESE just would not change their requirements. Um, I spoke to legislators about this because it seemed to be the only way would be seriously to pass a law. And that's actually what it's taking. So I guess the moral of the story is never give up. <laughs> I'm happy I lived long enough to see this, but it still isn't quite complete yet. But MASC, um, MASC was definitely advocating for that. And um, again, that passed 96 to 2. And then the other uh, policies, uh, the zero tolerance policies, what, which was to, whenever possible, um, to find other methods of trying to give our students the best chance to remain in school. Um, also, federal funding for electrical infrastructure in school buses. That was a very interesting conversation. Uh, not only because of the um, the science involved, but also the issues faced by the regional schools and the rural schools. It was a real eye-opener to hear what those districts go through and what they brought up about reasons pro and con on whether to require uh, electric school buses. And then the final resolution, number nine, was to um, support legislation calling for regulations prohibiting public schools from using um, Native American mascots. This is different than last year. There was a resolution last year to follow up with legislation. And this one, it gives latitude to school districts because some school districts are actually honoring Native Americans. And there are Native American school districts in our state, and they may want to be able to have um, an honorific mascot or name as part of their identification. So this gives some latitude. It's a much more reasonable 
um, request and uh, hopefully that will help with the legislation that's coming up now. So I thank you for letting me attend on your behalf. It really was a very, very good conference very different because of COVID. They had limited the number of people who could attend in person. They had, um, everything was hybrid. If you didn't feel comfortable going into a, a seminar room, you could watch it on, on, on your uh, devices. They had every room at the hotel where there would be people gathering. Uh, they had a very specific air filtration system which was really amazing to hear about how it worked. I've got all the I've got all the brochures here if you want to see them. And um, they uh, they really had everyone following all kinds of of um, careful protocols. Masks were optional for anyone who had been vaccinated, but it was completely up to people. We were given masks, and then the masks and hand sanitizer available through out the entire complex. Um, the seating was so very different. Uh, at a normal table where you might sit with 10 people, you'd sit with two. They really spread the crowd out. Speakers on stage did not wear their masks, but they did put them on afterwards. And when, when they were taking photographs and things, people took the masks off. But other than that, it went well and um, it was it was a really great experience, a lot of great classes, and uh, you'll hear more about those coming up uh, with topics that will be of interest to people going through the current times with COVID, with funding, with everything. So thanks again. Thank you, Mrs. Dunn. Um, thank you for always representing us in this year after year. You do a great job, and you bring back a lot of information, and we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Any questions, concerns? No? Okay. Moving on, we will go to subcommittee reports. Um, first one, education subcommittee. Mr. Hawkman is not here for that. Do we have, oh, do you have, oh, you have it? You know I never know which one. <laughs> I was waiting for, <laughs> nothing to report at this time, uh, Madam Thank Chairman. You. Finance subcommittee, nothing to report. School safety subcommittee, Mr. Olympio. Nothing to report. Nothing to report. Uh, athletic and Wellness Committee, um, Mr. Arnotis. You got it. Nothing new to report. I was waiting. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. We can we can report that the seniors are ahead, twelve to nothing, right now in the Powder Puff game. <laughs> uh, I would like to congratulate the PBD Gladiators of uh, youth football. They won the Super Bowl uh, this past Sunday. They beat Lynn thirteen to twelve. And I would say pretty much all of the uh, players involved are seventh and eighth grade students at the Higgins. So it's uh, this particular uh, age group, it's their second straight Super Bowl. So it's a great season. Thank you to the players, coaches, parents, and cheerleaders. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up, Mr. Olympio. Hope to see them raise through the ranks of Peabody. Um, and then we have Quality and Standards Subcommittee. Mrs. Dunn. Thank you. Um, I will be contacting Mr. Olympio and Mr. Arnotis before you leave. We're going to put some work on your shoulders for the next couple of weeks. Um, MASC had done a review of policies, and uh, policy section D has been completely redone to conform with current language. So um, they have sent that out, and we just need to look at it to make sure that it works for our district and make sure that it all conforms with our policies. So um, I, I will send that out to you um, and Dr. Vidala as well. And then um, we'll have to just schedule a meeting to go over that. So you're not getting out easy. Thank you, Mrs. Dunn. Uh, the next one is liaison to parent and student advisory boards. Mrs. Dunn. Nothing to report this evening, but I'm very happy to see that the student advisory board is back back in place that's wonderful thank you um building and grounds is that jared okay we're gonna skip over that one as he's not here and then the next one is special education parent advisory board mr olympio yeah we uh met last uh wednesday the 17th here at the higgins it was uh it was a great meeting some of the parents just kind of get me up to speed with how things are going during the course of the year and they're asking questions about masks and 
basically told him that uh, we're in a holding pad until January 15th. I mean, at least that's where the mandate uh, is up until. So uh, that's about it. But it was a good meeting and uh, probably schedule something in the near future. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Olympio. The next report is liaison to City Council and Legislative Delegation. Mr. Arnotis. Nothing new to report. Thank you. And the last one is the redistricting uh, ad hoc subcommittee. Mr. Hawkman is not here tonight, so we're going to move on. Um, the last item was new business, which we took out of order, which was citizens in. And if anybody else has anything to add, we can add it to, oh, Dr. Lord. Just want to point out to everybody that PBD Prep Spirit Wear just went on sale today. The links will be open until December 5th. Get yours today. <laughs> Very well. We will, Dr. Lord. Thank you. Anything else? Well, I wish you all a wonderful, happy Thanksgiving. Oh, Mrs. Dunn, go ahead. I, I want to thank Mr. Swanson for joining us at every meeting. And we really do appreciate it. So you'll be ready to hit the ground running when, when you're on in January. There you go. Thank you for coming, Mr. Swanson. We look forward to working with you. Great. All right, any other items for the next agenda? Please submit. Mr. Hockman, I'm sorry. <laughs> you missed it. <laughs> yeah, hi, Ms. Carpenter, how are you? <laughs> sorry, everybody. I was at the uh, community Thanksgiving service, so I apologize for not being with you. But I did want to announce, if I may. Sure, go right we, ahead. We do have a redistricting uh, committee meeting scheduled for December 16th. 6 p.m. here at the Higgins will post in the ordinary course. Did you have anything for your other committee? Or are you good? We're going to adjourn. You good? Okay. All right. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> good night. Happy Thanksgiving.